Nestled in the Rocky Mountains, the town of Loveland, Colorado becomes a global hub of innovation as people from all corners of the world converge for the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Here, innovation is front and center as segues dart past and attendees are clad in 3D printed Mandalorian armor and they showcase their craftsmanship and robot racers clash in fierce battles. They're called Death Racers. Now, this isn't just any gathering. It is a celebration of creativity where tech enthusiasts and nerds and engineers and DIYers, they come together and they push the boundaries of 3D printing. A few weeks ago, I joined the crowds in Loveland as a part of the Vision Miner booth. We've joined Vision Miner in the past. They actually were a part of our booth in Formnex in Frankfurt, Germany. If you're not familiar with Vision Miner, they specialize in helping businesses get up and running by selling 3D printers, scanners, advanced materials, and more. Vision Miner also makes their own 3D printer, the 22 IDEX V2, a high temperature IDEX 3D printer designed for printing Peak and Ultima. The 22 IDEX features our copperhead hot end on the printer, which is why we decided to tag along with Vision Miner and join them at the show. While we were there, I had the opportunity to chat with Rob from Vision Miner and talk a little bit more about the 22 IDEX and Vision Miner's really cool nanopolymer bed adhesive. Let's take a look at that interview. We are at the 2024 Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival in Loveland, Colorado. I am joining Vision Miner in their booth here. This is Rob Lint. Rob, tell me a little bit about the machine we have here. Tell everyone about Vision Miner and what we're doing here at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Awesome, thank you, Payton. We are here at Rocky Mountain really showing off our nano adhesive because that applies to everybody in the 3D printing market, literally every machine every material except for a couple like polypropylene but literally it's a lifesaver and so many people have come up and just said thank you and amazing stuff and we wanted to show off our industrial high temperature 3d printer here because it's just awesome technology and a lot of it was spawned out of the shows like this you know the technology in the consumer market after all the patents expired and whatnot, most of the innovation really is happening in the open source community and then transferring into business. And that's exactly what we've done here. So on this machine, we're featuring the Slice Engineering Copperhead Hot and Bontech LGDX extruders and duet boards to run the whole system. So we're using the best of the best industry standard technology in this machine. We just wanted to show it off to people here to inspire people to create more stuff and eventually even move into those high and engineering grade materials like nylon, polycarbonate, and of course, peak, ultim, and the super high temp ones. Yeah. What are people using this machine for right now? The majority of our customers are aerospace, medical, oil and gas companies, and frankly, most of the applications are the super high temp materials from polyphenol sulfoam, PPSU, to peak and ultim. And most of those projects are shrouded in NDAs, so yeah. we can't actually show them off. Uh, but then there's a large portion of the customers also using it for large polycarbonate and nylon prints because the heated chamber yeah. just assists in keeping all the warping and everything down so you can do prints that you simply cannot do on other printers without such a heated chamber and the high specs of the hot ends and the beds and everything else. I do want to uh, ask one last question about the IDEX part of the IDEX 22 because it's using the copperhead hot ends why did you choose the slice hot end over another option on the market? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, there's a lot of great hot end manufacturers out there and a lot of great designs. But what we love about Slice is, first off, they're a great team, really good people. But they're made in America, then they're really serious about their engineering. They're really not even a hobbyist level product. It's, it's designed for the high end market. And it really shows in just the, the fit and finish and the, the quality of the parts. Some people ask why the copperhead instead of the mosquito or the magnum and one of the higher flow items. Well, first off, the Z offset that we're able to achieve with the bimetallic heat break to set the Z offsets is very useful. But more so, this is a high temp printer designed for the high temp materials. And yes, you could go with higher flow, but really throughput and flow rate is not your bottleneck when it comes to these high temp materials. So the copperhead overperforms. You're not going at 500 millimeters a second at you know 
6.4 layer heights doing these materials because that actually presents more challenges and more issues and you don't actually get a good part that you can use in an aerospace application. It's not about flow and speed. It's about the quality and the heat profile of the actual hot end. So that's a really big reason we went with Slice. That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more about the nanopolymer adhesive? We use this as Slice on all of our printers. We've tried out lots of different, you know, bed adhesive, we use glue stick, we use some other bed adhesive as well, but the nanopolymer is our go-to. You tell us a bit more about the nanopolymer, because I mean, we've got tons of samples here that we've been giving out, yeah. giving out so much nano. What makes the nanopolymer adhesive unique and what makes it work so well, as much as you can say about it? Yeah, so really it was designed and created because we were printing Peak and Ultim and PPSU and just getting those materials to stay on the bed with all the warping was insanely difficult. And we had maybe a 20 to 50% yield rate in the beginning. So it activates at elevated temperature, so above 50 to 60 Celsius, and it creates a molecular bond between the polymer and the build plate. And then when it cools down, it pops right off. And as we've noticed, just all these people coming up over the years that have used the Nano for years now, and frankly, a little goes a long way. Some guys who go through about a bottle a year and they're printing every day. And it just works incredibly well. We made it for Peak and Ultim, and then we accidentally discovered on our Ultim maker that it worked for PLA, PETG, ABS, ASA, you name it, it works with it, except polypropylene. Nothing sticks to that stuff except itself. And uh, it's just been amazing hearing all the testimonials. Holy crap, I love your stuff. This is so great. Thank you so much. Where can people learn more about the bed adhesive or the IDEX 22 if they want to learn more about that? Uh, just go to visionminer.com if you want info on the adhesive. We've got all the information on visionminer.com slash adhesive. And of course, you can go to Slice Engineering. You can go to one of our many dealers or you can buy it direct or on Amazon. It's all over the internet. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much. Cool. Thank you. While we were at Remurf, can I call it Remurf? I'm going to call it Remurf. While we were at Remurf, the real star of the show was Vision Miner's nanopolymer adhesive. Rob talked about it a little bit there in the interview, but if you're not familiar, the nanopolymer adhesive from Vision Miner is designed for high temp materials like Peak or PEI or Ultim, but it works with normal temp materials like ABS, PLA, or nylon. It's super long lasting with PLA or PETG, and it leaves no residue or mess like glue stick or hairspray. It works on lots of build services, including glass and carbon fiber. It is super easy to clean and reapply, it doesn't leave any residue, and it's made from safe, non-toxic, and organic compounds. If you're interested in a video about nanopolymer bed adhesive or other bed adhesives, let me know in the comment below. I'm interested in doing tests of these side by side if that's something that you're interested in. I'll include a link to more info about Nano in the description as well. And while you're there, we have a link to a free guide called Seven Things You Should Not Do With Your 3D Printer, and that's designed to save you time and money while 3D printing completely for free. Thanks for watching. I'm Peyton with Slice Engineering. Don't forget to stay zesty.